What we're going to be going over here is direct labor rate or price variances here and also looking at direct labor efficiency variances. And we're going to be calculating these. And it's going to be based on a standard costing system. So what I've got that showing here is I've got it showing in T-account form and we're going to track th these labor costs through our different T-accounts here. And first for a conceptual overview of what's going on here. Say for example you're managing a particular manufacturing department or you're looking at a particular uh, project that you're tracking here. And what you want to do here is we'll start with the case here where you're going to accumulate some wages payable here at their actual cost for this particular department or this particular project you're looking at and then those wages payable are going to be transferred into a c control account here for a manufacturing control account here they're going to be coming in at their actual cost here at a particular actual hourly rate here and the actual hours that you use for the particular period you're looking at here or this particular project and then they're going to be transferred out of your manufacturing payroll account into the work and process account here at a standard cost and what we mean by a standard cost they're going to come in at a standard rate and also based on the standard hours that are allocated for the particular project or the department you're looking at so there's going to be a difference here between your hourly rates here uh, your actual hourly rates and your standard rates and that's going to be uh, going into your direct labor rate variance based on actual hours used and then for the uh, difference between your actual hourly hours used versus the standard hours allocated uh, that times some standard rate that's going to go into your direct labor efficiency variance okay so we'll go over our calculations here but before we get into that let's just go down and look at our key what we're talking about here the AR here in red stands for actual hour, hourly rate here SR means the standard hourly rate AHU here is the actual hours used and SHA here is the standard hours allowed okay so let's go through our example here so we'll start out with our wages payable again this is a control account and it be the actual cost here so say for example for the month here for this project we accumulated here wages payable of sixty two thousand a hundred and fifteen dollars so that's the actual cost that we have on wages payable and uh, that's going to be transferred in here credit to our wages payable is going to be a debit to our manufacturing payroll control account at the actual cost again so the sixty two thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars that's based on our actual rate here actual hourly rate here of that fifteen dollars and fifteen cents per hour times the actual hours used here four thousand one hundred hours so those fifteen dollars fifteen cents times forty one hundred hours is going to give you the actual cost here of sixty two thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars so now we're going to transfer that our actual cost here the sixty two thousand hundred fifteen dollars credit at your manufacturing payroll by that amount and it's going to be transferred into work and process a control account at the standard cost here we're going to not record the actual cost that we have but it's going to be based on the standard cost uh, that was set here based on that different uh, that project that we're looking at and that's going to come in at 60 could be debited here for sixty thousand dollars so you can see there's a difference here between what you're transferring out here the actual cost of sixty two thousand one hundred fifteen dollars it's coming into the work and process account here we're going to record it at the standard cost of sixty thousand dollars so we have to account for that variation here of what twenty one hundred and fifteen dollars so first off for our work and process our standard cost how would we record it here this is where you take the standard hourly rate here and in our example here the standard hourly rate should have been fifteen dollars here that's what we budgeted for and that's what we calculated here as our standard rate T times the standard hours allocated for that particular job or department here we allocated four thousand hours okay so fifteen dollars times four thousand hours is going to give you the sixty thousand dollars here so that's our standard cost versus our actual cost now let's figure out our direct our uh, variances here so starting with our direct labor rate variance here so you can see here that's based on our hourly rate here our actual rate here per hour was that we actually uh, had for our cost here that we 
cumulated of that is $15.15. .15. So our standard rate, that's what we budgeted for here, or that's what we allocated as our standard rate was $15. Now, our labor rate variance is really the difference between our actual uh, versus our actual rate here versus our standard rate times the actual hours used. So let's go down here and look at that. So what we would do here is we take our actual rate here of $15.15, .15, uh, subtract our standard rate from it here. The difference here is $15, or what would that be, $15, $15 here? Uh, so the difference is $0.15 cents on an hourly basis times the actual hours used here, 4,100 hours. So that's going to give us $615. And we would debit our direct labor uh, for that amount here, but $615. Now that's, uh, when we talk about debiting here, that means it's an unfavorable labor rate variance. And the reason that is, is because our actual hours that we uh, used, our actual, excuse me, our actual labor rate here was $15.15 .15 per hour. But that is greater than our standard labor rate here of $15 per hour. So uh, this is where we get that I'm showing it as U here is in unfavorable. That means is we had to pay more. Our, our cost here for the actual labor rate is greater than our standard cost here we had established. Okay, so that would be the unfavorable case here. Now, if the opposite was true where our actual labor rate here was less than $15, uh, we would have a difference here where our direct labor rate variance would be favorable. We would have credited or reduced our direct labor rate here by the difference or by the, say, the actual rate here would be less than our standard rate that we had established. Okay, so that's our direct labor rate variance. Just remember, it's the actual rate on an hourly basis here less our standard rate here on an hourly basis times the actual hours used for the project or for the month here. Okay, that's direct labor rate variance. Now, the other thing is our direct labor efficiency variance because this is where that comes into play. So this is the case here where you're going to take your act, use, take your actual hours used here and compare it to your standard hours uh, allowed here for this for the case here. So take the difference, the actual hours used here, uh, 4,100 hours times the actual uh, standard hours allowed here, 4,000 hours, is going to give you what, a hundred a difference here of 100 hours here. Uh, in the, uh, greater hours here, the usage was 100 hours more than the standard hours allocated times your standard labor rate here, a per hour basis of $15. So that gives us what, 100 hours here times $15 is going to give us $1,500 here in direct labor efficiency variance. And just remember that, again, we're debiting it here. And that's going to be unfavorable here because your actual hours used here, a 4,100 hours here, is greater than your standard hours uh, allowed here, 4,000 hours. So that's, that's where it's coming up unfavorable again. Now, it would have been favorable here had we actually used less hours. Say our actual hours used say would have been 3,900 hours here versus our standard hours allocated here at 4,000 hours here. So the difference would have been going in as a direct labor, uh, as a credit here, a reduction in our direct labor efficiency variance here. And that would have been a favorable cause here. So just remember when you're talking about these variances here and both cases here for direct labor rate of variances versus your direct labor efficiency variances, any debits are unfavorable because that's where your, 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 your standard cost is uh, or your, what you actually, your actual rates or your actual usage here is greater than whatever your standard uh, cost would have been established at. So uh, debits are unfavorable, credits are favorable in both cases here for labor rate variances and labor efficiency variances. So if we go back to our case here where we had that uh, based on our standard rate and standard hours allowed here for the particular project or department, you can uh, that 60,000 here versus $62,115 here. Uh, the difference, again, uh, the debits and credits here were split between your direct labor rate variance here. That included $615 here in direct labor rate variances plus the direct labor efficiency variance of $1,500. So what is that? 
total here, $2,115. So that accounts for the difference here between your actual cost here and your standard cost here of $2,115. $62,115 worth versus $60,000 here in your standard cost. So just remember here, when you're working with these labor rate or these labor uh, rates and efficiency variances, all you're really doing is comparing your on, for your labor rate variance, you're just taking your actual hourly rate that it cost you for the period here or for the project and compare it to the standard labor rate here that was established based on some standard costing here. The difference between the two times your actual hours used here equals your uh, uh, labor rate variance, either unfavorable or favorable. And for your direct labor efficiency variances, that was based on actual qu uh, quantities here or hourly amounts. So this is based here on your efficiency is based on the actual hours used compared to the actual hours allocated times the standard rate here, hourly rate here, that gave you your direct labor efficiency variances. So the efficiency variances is based on some uh, hour, um, hours that you've either had actual hours used and your, versus your standard hours allocated times some standard labor rate. So this is really quantities of hours that you're looking at here and uh, times some standard labor rate versus your direct labor rate variance. This is where you're looking at uh, the cost on a per hourly basis times some standard or some actual hours used here. So you can see direct labor rate is based on the standard hour or your hourly costs here and the rec and your efficiency variance is based on hours used or quantity of hours used here. Okay, so let's just go over these accounts one more time here so you understand what's in them. So if we're looking at our direct labor efficiency variances, that is your actual hours used here. Subtract, and you would subtract your standard hours allowed here times your standard uh, standard rate on a per hourly basis. Actual hours used is minus your standard hours allocated times some standard uh, rate or some standard hourly rate that you're looking at. So that's your direct labor efficiency variance. And then for your direct labor rate of variance, that's your actual rate on an hourly basis minus your standard rate on an hourly basis times the actual hours used. And then moving up to our other accounts here, our wages payable. Again, that was at a control account at the actual cost. It's just the uh, at wages payable at their actual amount. And then your manufacturing payroll account here, again, a control account. That's just your actual cost here, the actual labor rate uh, at an hourly basis times your actual hours used. And then for your work in process, that's just your standard rate here on an hourly basis times your standard hours allowed here for, for whatever you're looking at here. It could be the departmental hours or you could be looking at some specific project. Okay, okay, and then one other thing here just to expand on our definitions a little further here. All right, going over here, just looking at our direct labor rate or price variance as you call it here. Again, this is where you're just expanding on the definition. You take your actual hours worked times your actual rate on an hourly basis, and you would subtract from that the actual hours worked again here times the standard rate here on an hourly basis. Okay, so that's your direct labor rate or price variance. And then your direct labor efficiency variance, that's really taking your actual hours worked times the standard rate here on an hourly basis. And you would subtract from that here your standard hours allowed here uh, times, again, your standard rate on an hourly basis. Okay, so that's the difference here between your direct labor rate uh, or price variances versus your direct labor efficiency uh, variance here. Okay. Okay, one last point, let's go over it here, just looking at our debits and credits here between our actual cost here and our manufacturing payroll 
in our work in process here for our standard cost. Say for example you were just given these numbers here and you weren't given any actual hours used or standard labor rates and so forth but you knew the $62,115 here that was your actual cost as a credit here in your manufacturing payroll and then the debit here in your work in process here was $60,000. So you know that you're going to have some variances here and the variances are going to be what? $2,100 fifteen dollars here and they're going to have to be split between either your direct labor rate variance or your direct labor efficiency variances and you could have the case here where uh, your rate variances could be unfavorable your efficiency variances could be very favorable or vice versa or they both could be unfavorable or both favorable but what you would have to know here to determine the diff uh, difference between any efficiency or rate variances you would have to know one or the other you know that you have the uh, debit here a uh, sixty thousand dollars you're going to need some associated debits here in your in your uh, variances here between your rate variances and your efficiency variances here of twenty one hundred and fifteen dollars to balance with your credit here in your uh, pay manufacturing payroll account here of sixty two hundred and fifteen dollars so again you'd have to know uh, to determine any efficiency variance here and you didn't know the efficiency variance but you did know the direct labor rate variance in this case is six hundred and fifteen dollars you can go and add that to your debit here or your debit and your direct labor rate variance of six hundred fifteen dollars add it to the uh, debit here in your work in process of sixty thousand dollars so then you can compare your debits and credits here and you're going to see that you're going to need an actual debit here in your direct labor efficiency variance of fifteen hundred dollars so just using your debits and credits here you can go and you determine any efficiency variances here based on the difference between your credits here that you'd be coming out of manufacturing payroll that uh, actual cost amount versus your debit here to your work and process based on your standard cost. Just remember the uh, difference between uh, the, this, this variance here that you were looking at, in this case it was split both between the direct labor rate variance and the direct labor efficiency variance. And we had that 615 as a debit to direct labor rate variance plus the 1500 here to direct labor efficiency variance and that total of $2,115 added to our direct, our debit here to our work in process of $60,000 balances with our manufacturing actual, payroll actual cost here, $62,115. So I'm just doing a play here on your debits and credits and how you could balance them out here to determine any of your rate variances, knowing one variance or the other variance based on what's sitting in your standard cost here for your work in process versus what your actual cost would be for your manufacturing payroll. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.